do you think this will actually bring to Bitcoin and to strike itself? A uh, simple answer to that question is a lot. Um, but I think the integration for the Bitcoin and Lightning monetary network has far more reaching implications than just for Twitter, just for Strike as independent businesses. You're talking about a monetary network that spans the entire globe and can achieve instant, nearly free global cash finality. And comparing that with a widely distributed internet company like Twitter, I mean, this is a huge, huge deal and we're going to see a knock on effect. This Twitter will not be the last. This is a, the beginning of a broader trend of companies using the world's first global monetary network to interact with their users in a monetary fashion. All right. Well, we'll certainly have to see how popular tipping on Twitter becomes and then tipping on Twitter with Bitcoin. Obviously, this is a big partnership for you. You, you say more deals are, are coming with other players. How do you continue to win those deals and outcompete these other third party providers who want a piece of this? You know, Emily, you're going to call me crazy. It comes easy. Why does it come easy? It's because the Bitcoin network is an open monetary network. There are people building on the Bitcoin network all around the world. MIT professors, companies in San Francisco, companies in China. The Bitcoin network gets better day in, day out, whether I work on it or not. You cannot say the same about the PayPal network. You cannot say the same about the Visa network. Those are closed, legacy, outdated financial systems. The Bitcoin network is open similar to the internet in the same way that Google is a better company for every new website that comes on. We are a better company for everyone that joins the Bitcoin open monetary network. So we get better whether I do anything or not. And that's the open nature of this system. It's the first open network for money that we've seen in human history. So it comes easy, Emily. It comes easy. All right. If it's coming so easy, tell us how much volume is being done in the Strike app itself. Um, a lot. I'm, I'm not going to be disclosing that on TV, um, but we're very happy with where we're at. I can tell you this. Uh, the company was founded 18 months ago uh, and we integrated with Twitter today. Uh, we we're part of the El Salvador push. Um, I'm tremendously proud of this company and where we're going. And uh, I, I'm happy with the numbers, but that's my secret to know. And uh, maybe someday yours to find out. All right. We'll have to ask you again. Let's talk about El Salvador. How's business going there? It's great. It's great. I mean, again, this is an open monetary network that can achieve physical monetary settlement anywhere in the world. And so now remittance payments from the U.S. to El Salvador is free and instant compared to the legacy Western Union system and solution, which takes days and upwards of 50 percent. So you're starting to see people migrate to a singular standard to settle value. That is Bitcoin. And you're starting to see a monetary network that's inclusive to all. The El Salvador and 70, over 70% 70 of that country was not banked before. Now 100% of that country has access to free and instant remittance and to make and receive payments for goods and services at no cost in an instantaneous fashion. So the world, humanity is moving in the right direction. I'm proud of that. And Bitcoin is a huge proponent and key part of that. Still, you know, it doesn't necessarily come easy to El Salvador. There's been pushback from the population against this adoption of Bitcoin. What countries do you think are next seeing how difficult it has been in the country to take the start to finish. I wouldn't say, listen, I mean, no one in throughout human history has ever fully, no country's fully agreed on any move, right? I mean, there's going to be adversaries to any decision that's ever made, especially one at that scale. Um, but I think the biggest proponents and, and ones to gain advantage from inter integrating Bitcoin as a network and as a monetary asset are emerging markets. Emerging markets face unprecedented macro environment with the monetary expansion that's happening at central banks right now. It is not okay and it is crushing those markets. And you're talking about emerging markets that are relatively unbanked. You're talking about citizens that don't have access to basic human freedoms and a high quality of life because they're based on a cash standard and they're excluded and gatekeeped out of the monetary networks that you and I in the developed world can utilize to live a high quality of life. There is no Venmo in El Salvador. There's no cash app. The Visa network's not widely distributed. And so emerging markets, one, can hedge themselves against the asinine monetary expansion happening at central banks and protect their purchasing power, protect their savings and grow their wealth. And they can gain access to the most inclusive monetary network of all time with a simple internet connection. All you need is an internet connection and a mobile device, and you have the best monetary experience in the Bitcoin network. 
Okay. So quickly, I know you said early on you'd allow users to keep their funds in Bitcoin or Tether, then exchange that for fiat. Seems like you've dropped the Tether option. Quickly, why is that? Listen, at Strike, we optimize for the best experience, the best brand. We want to do what's best for our consumers. Uh, and people want cash. People want dollars. And uh, so we listen to our users. We iterate. I mean, one of the key properties of building an experience that's valuable is being a good listener and being patient. And so we're constantly iterating perfection. There's no finish line in building software. It's a constant iterative process. And so we continue to add features to our product and add services that our consumers want. And so it's really as simple as that.